All right. Hello, everybody. We are going to today start generating some new characters in realms. Now, we start with the name. Something I slightly don't like about this is, well, I often name my character after I know what class and race they are. In this, you start with the name and then do the rest after. So, let's go with, um, I do not know which character I'm creating right now. Let's go with uh, Jeremiah, because why not? Pops into mind. We're going to start with level 1. You can start at any level you want, up to level 30. I think it goes up to higher than level 30, but most of the time my characters, I don't get past here. Jeremiah is a male name. What race are we going to... So these are the classes. We have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20. Oh, 20. Perfect. Roll a d20. What class is this guy going to be? So, okay. So some of these I'm going to roll for just for the giggles. But generally, with this game, as with any D&D &D party, you want a healer. One or two casters, someone to open locks, and a couple guys to do some fighting. I like to have one guy that's at least, at least one guy that's dedicated melee and one guy that's dedicated um, ranged. The rogue can also do the ranged. Rogues are also pretty good at melee. Um, fighters can go either way. Uh, rangers and archers, they're kind of, they can do both, but usually are much better at the ranged stuff. And we have rolled 18, so we're going to do a warlock with this one. No. 18, 19, 20. Battle mage. Ooh, Jeremiah's my battle mage. So this here gives us a preview of what is to come. We see that at level 15 is going to get... First level spell protection, at 30 you get second, and at 45, so you can get up to level 45, you get third level spell protection. Um, this is a wee bit confusing, but um, this is the lowest I can roll based on my class. This is the highest I can roll based on my class, and whatever gets rolled, these modifiers will be applied to that roll when it's showing up. And... What this game does is it rolls straight down the line. So it's not like you can mix and match where your stats are. I am going to be re-rolling until I get nice stuff. Because generally you want to have double digits everything. And whatever your primary attributes are, which as a battle mage, I think I'm going to want brawn and knowledge. Yeah, brawn and knowledge. They're my primary attributes because... Battle mages are meant to be melee, but they're also meant to cast spells, which is cool, because I wanted to do this class already. Some of the special abilities you have. Um, adjustment for casts. So these are for saving throws of various sorts. Spell casting. So this tells you what kind of spellcaster you are. Generally, I like to have one sorcerer, one priest, and one enchanter in a class, because you can get a spell scroll for each type a spellcasting class um, starting at level five okay so i do not get any spellcasting to level five that is good to know because that means this guy is more fighting than spellcasting at low levels interesting interesting yes he can use missile weapons that's good generally i like having somebody can use missile weapons because otherwise like in my in, in a game I've played with this, I had no missile weapon usage on a couple of my casters. So if they ran out of spell points, which we'll get into that later, um, it's like it's mana. When they ran out of mana, they couldn't. They had to run up and do dagger stabs. And since they're not very good at that, it didn't go great. So max attack is around 3. Cool. So max stamina bonus plus 3. Good. Plus 3 is good. Starting in young age group. 
So he's good with two-handed weapons. I wonder if he can use a shield. If he can't, that's great, actually, because I know some two-handed weapons in this. And cool, initial 12, level up 8. This is BS. Um, maybe attack 4-4. Four, four. Mm, I don't know what these numbers mean exactly, because it doesn't really work this way, as I've noticed on some other characters. So that's this. Now, what? I'm not going to be human. Human is probably the worst race for these guys. Um, Hobgoblin's interesting. Because you get a brawn bonus, but you get a knowledge um, nerf. Regeneration is interesting, because regeneration just means every round you increase your health points. Um, he starts with a 3-2, which is very nice. Max attack per round is 5, so that's different than the other one, which is 3. Interesting. This can mean that potentially, this race, I will have more attacks per round than um, opportunities to cast spells. So what I mean by that is, if I somehow reach uh, four attacks per round, then the first three attacks I can cast spells, but the fifth attack is a race-based one and not a cast-based one, so I can only do um, physical attack, melee or ranged. Race hatreds are interesting little modifiers. Uh, this is more damage, so damage reduction is not the same as saving throws. Um, what else would be good? I'm leaning towards the Hobgoblin for this battle mage. Already. The Half-Elf and the Half-Orc aren't that good. Really, the Human and the Elves and the Half-Ones aren't really all that good. Um, I'm wanting to do... I'm hoping to do a... Uh, what's Demon for this? I'm hoping to do a Demon... Barbarian for this at some point. Fire protection and protection of first level to start. That is very interesting. No conditions. So if I were a demon, I'd get protection of first from first level before level 15, and then at level 15 I get nothing. So that's kind of a bane and a boon. Vampire, he absorbs spell energy. That could be very useful. Actually, this actually this is very useful. I want to do this guy because this is very useful. He's got a high base movement, useful for a melee character. He's got a brawn and knowledge bonus, which I want, and these other bonuses kind of cancel out the negatives that I have. Cancel, cancel, and net is plus one. He's got more than, starts with more than one attack per round. So three attack, three, three, two, you probably already understand, but I'll say it anyway. You get one attack the first round, two attacks the next round. And forth. Uh, he's got a bunch of interesting bonuses here. So getting sneak attack up is always nice because any character can do a sneak attack and cause or cause major wound. Rogues get it. Rogues are more likely to sneak attack, but it's nice to have that with any race, any class. You aging, just to show you stuff. Um. These guys start pretty darn old and just get older. I said I was going to start in young for my cast, so that's good. I'll get, I should get all these bonuses to when I'm rolling my stats. We're going to go with a vampire battle mage. Yeah. You may notice there's no back button. That's a slight issue with this whole situation, in my opinion. Um, battle mage, battle mage. This guy looks freaky, but we're gonna go with him. It's either him or him. I like in this one. Um, that's his icon. Yeah, sure. I don't really care too much about these. All right. These are decent starting stats. Um, you can't save a set and go back and look, unfortunately. Now, I was going to roll more stats, but these are pretty good ones. My vitality is kind of low, though. My stamina is only four. Okay, so I'm going to re-roll these. I'm going to roll a couple here for you guys so you see how it goes. 
and then at some point I'll probably pause this and just roll until I'm happy. This is going to be boring. What I want is I want to get a brawn and a knowledge above 18, and the rest I want to be double digits. This is temptingly decent, though, as it is, because... Dodge Missile 32, plus 3 to hit, general plus 3 damage, chance hits 9. It's not great, but it'll go up. You know, I am going to keep this, actually. We're going to keep this. 5 2. Wow, that's a lot of attacks. Okay. Yes, I wish to keep Jeremiah. Now we're going to generate another new character. Emilia. Popped in their mind. Female. And, alright, so we're going to roll again. We rolled 17, which is a dabbler. Now, we're going to see what kind of spell casting this is. If it's, it's an enchanter, not a sorcerer. Okay, we are going to keep this then. And can use missile weapons? Yes. Okay, good. So we're going to have a dabbler. Battle mage and a dabbler. Um, you can see, you can pause and look at all these bonuses and stuff. You can see some good ones for that. Dabbler's kind of like an evoker in 5th edition. I think I have a dabbler somewhere else. Um, but this guy only starts at level 5 as well. Interesting. We're going to have some melee characters before we get spells going. Human? Definitely not human. Um, oh wait, do I have goblin? Cobalt. Cobalt are actually really good in this. They have downs here. and I don't want that, so we're not going to do that. Um... As you can see, they have massive racial adjustments on their damage re resistance. Damage, yeah, damage reduction. And they've got really big bonuses here, so I would definitely make a Cobalt Rogue at some point. I did in my other game. I think Gnomes are decent. So they have a Knowledge bonus. I didn't look. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I think it was Brawn Knowledge as well for a Dabbler. I forgot to look at what those bonuses were. Go back and look at what they are. Tell me what they are. Yell at me. Tell me in the con content uh, comments. Um. Hmm. It's dwarf get because it's a dwarf icon for the dabbler. It's brawn bonus. Decent things here. Hmm. 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 Leprechauns. Leprechauns are always invisible. Which is cool. But they have such negs here. They're also kind of... They're decent cast spellcasters, even though they have the negs here. they also decent um, rogues, particularly because of the agility. It's a furfoot guy. Uh, no. As you can see, depending on where you click it, you get um, the list will shift because it's entirely based on where you click it. So one or two of those can pop up. It's a very interesting thing about this game. Well, not really, but... Um, um, um. Whatever. I'm going to go with my first instinct and go with Gnome. Is it Gnome? Yeah, it was Gnome. I'm going to go with my first instinct and do Gnome. We'll see how that goes. He's a dabbler. He's a dabbler. I feel like he's this kind of dabbler. Yeah. Debonair, Debler. Two axes. Oh no, that's right, it's a woman. Oops. 
<laughs> okay, so I'll show you later. You can actually, you can, you can modify your appearance. And I'll do that later. I'll do that later. <laughs> All right. Okay. So. It's great knowledge and judgment, but the brawn. I feel like I need knowledge. Cause I'm not sure if it's knowledge and judgment or a combination of them give you your spell points whenever those come around. This is great stamina, though. You know, I also know there are things that'll boost your spell points. I think I'm going to stick with this. These are good stats. I don't usually see stats this great. Yeah, I'm keeping this. Okay. Yes. Um. Uh. Harold, why the heck not? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna pick because I want to pick my berserker this time. So he's got fire protection, that's cool. He's definitely brawn based, and vitality is a good stat for him, too. Um, okay, I can do this. I can do a demon based. He's already got fire protection. Which kind of makes me want to do it less. What's Lizard Man? Regenerating. Okay, so conditions regenerating. It's not that it's the difference from race can regenerate. This means he gains one hit point back per round or more, usually just one. And race can regenerate just means that if you rest, you will heal eventually. If it says no, then you must be healed by magic. Important distinction. This guy's real weak to cold if I pick this though. He's already got heat protection and he's got more heat protection. Even more cold. Oh. Uh. <laughs> He's got a vitality and a brawn. Hmm. Berserker Hop Goblin. I hadn't considered this. I did want to do. I kind of wanted to do it as a demon, but I didn't know I got the fire resistance off the start. I don't like the cold weakness. Unlucky as heck, though. Force lock? Yep, that's what we want. Sure. And he's gonna be pretty young. He's a burnout senior. You're, gonna start, you're not gonna start as a senior, are you? I hope they don't start as a senior. Hobgoblin, he's male. We're gonna do this one. Purple Berserker. What's age 14? Okay, good. Yes, we want we want youth for this particular race because he, there's um adrenaline, which is basically the haste spell. Ooh, that's good brawn. That's good vitality. You don't need to be smart. Although agility Agility is important for dodging with he's a berserker. I don't know. I don't really have damage reduction. Circus. This is tempting when we roll. Because I did say I wanted double digits in like everything. Although I'm not sure if I'm going to get that in judgment. Look at this. Look at what's going on here. 989. Nine. Wow. That is terrible. Uh. Uh, if I don't see at least an 18 in brawn, I'm just automatically rolling. It's good agility on this one, though. Judgment and knowledge. I wanted 10 on everything, but I don't think I'm going to get that on judgment. I must have serious nerfs on that one that I missed on the way here. Doesn't matter. He's berserker. How much judgment does he really need? 
I do like having a 32% dodge missile. 25% hit. 19 stamina points. Yeah, we're keeping this one, boys and girls. We're keeping this one. Can't hit undead for crap, but can hit demonic large and magic using very well. That's good. That's good. All right. 18 isn't the best, but it's my minimum. Yes, there are some things I can do to increase later. Um, Clarissa. Why for the memes? Hello, Clarice. Um, okay, so we have now, we have one melee fighter. I forgot to check. I'm going to check now, actually. Our berserkers, can they use range? No, I knew they couldn't use missile at all. They're going to be melee only. So we need one or two ranged and someone who's going to heal. So I believe cardinals and priests... Crusaders are the only ones that can heal. They're like the Battle Mage and the Dabber. They're like half casters. Um, minstrels and Enchanter type. Cardinal starts right away. Priest starts right away. So I'm going to roll to see if I get. So I'm looking for either a fighter. I suppose a monk's okay, too. Um, can use missile weapons. Judgment, agility, vitality. Yeah, very much like a traditional monk. Let's roll to see what we get, though. 16. Oh, I just rolled 18, 17, 16. I wish I was playing a real D&D game. 18, 17, 16. Assassin. Assassin. You can use missile question is and you can use sorcerer spells eventually which probably means you can use that scroll case do you have pick lock you have some pick lock I'll try this hopefully he can use thieves tools if not that'd be a bit of a bummer but there's many ways around that the knock spell and whatnot so Clarissa is our female assassin. And what's she going to be? What's she going to be? Cobalts are great. Cathoon, Clarissa that Cathoon. They get a good pick lock bonus. They get an acrobatic bonus. They get a jilly bonus. These are things we want. Forgot to check what assassins want, but, you know, agilities and luck are always good things. Doesn't like two-handed weapons. That's fine. Also a very young race. We're going to go with this. Um, these are kind of agendered. I mean, that looks like a dude. That looks like a dude. That could be either way. That could check. I have this as a female in my other game. That kind of looks like a female, too. This looks more assassin-y, though. Even though I've already used it. This looks very assassin-y, but not, that looks too male. So we'll use, uh, mm, no. No, no. I'm pretty sure I used this one for Clarissa and the other one, because she's ranged. But I'm going to do this one here, because assassin. And we want a high agility, which looks like we're going to get ooh, 25, but I don't want a 6 brawn. You need a decent brawn for carry weight. In most cases. Um, this one's looking really good, except for the low brawn. This one's looking really good. Yeah, for low carry weight's not a huge issue. You can just give them the light stuff. Oh, I forgot to click that for special info. You can check all these things. The clock's only 42. Yeah, that's okay. Hopefully she can use the thieves tools. So that's four. We still need to create a priest type and a 
a range or mix range. Um, all right. Um, what are we going to name this one? Vernon. Why not? Vermont. Vermont is a male. So now we are looking for either a some sort of mixed range, a mixed melee range fighter, or a priest. We rolled eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, we're gonna reroll. Roll a six, which is a sorcerer. We're still gonna gonna reroll until we find something that we can actually use. What is this? Nineteen. It's a warlock again. Can't use that. One. So we're making a Vernon the Fighter. Uh, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Kind of feel like that. I'm feeling that demon this time. I'm feeling the demon. Feeling a little devilish. What else would I do if I weren't that? Lizard man. Lizard man's decent. I don't care about that two-handed, but I do like the missile adjust. Oh, that's bad. Okay. Um, dwarf. Two-handed, yes, missile, no. Chemical protection. Potentially helpful, too. Works. We have a bit of a positive missile adjust. All of this is garbage, except for force lock. Well, I think I'm going to go with this, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go with the orc. Standard. Standard. Cool. Reroll. That's very good. That's not. Chance is 35, though. Missile dodge is 41. That's great. Plus 10 for it to hit top. This is... Guys. Guys. This is amazing. Because you want a good vitality and brawn on your, because vitality is your is your constitution score basically, uh, agility is your dexterity score basically, brawn is your strength. I think this is int and this is wisdom and this is kind of like charisma for using fifth edition arms. No, but this is great. This is great. Yes, I want to keep this character. And one more new character. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It's gonna be a she. She is going to be our healer. So it's either gonna be a priest or a cardinal. For some reason I'm feeling like doing it like that that witch from um what was that witch's name in in Borderlands? It's Tannis. It's Okay, female. So, odds, evens. We have odds, so it's a priest. I almost always get priests. I think they're better than the other one anyway. Um, you get permanent magic or at level 10. Knowledge and judgment. So you want both, basically. Demon priest. I'm just kidding. Uh, that would be funny, though. That would be really funny. Uh, knowledge and judgment bonuses is what we want. You do kind of, you kind of want a brawn too, because um, priests can wear heavy armor and have a shield and have decent blunt weapons. And like clerics in Dungeons and Dragons, they often end up fighting physically. So you do want some decent strength that way. I know I said they were terrible, I'm just looking at them. Um, not many really have a bonus to that, I don't think. Pretty sure none of the races actually have a bonus 
two. You give a bonus to knowledge, but you don't have a bonus to wisdom. You just don't. Okay, so we're going to go with dwarf. We're going to go with dwarf because everything else seems like garbage. They start pretty old and get really old. Aw, oh, what's she going to look like? Darling girl, where's your beards? Um, her. Why not? Okay. Now she's our little priest. So I want knowledge and judgment. Um, we're gonna roll for like 18s on these two, and at least a 15 on brawn. Be good. Like they're 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 pretty mad. Pretty multiple ability score dependent. But, if you roll long enough in realms, you get what you want. Suppose that could be said in regular D&D too. Okay, this is decent already. Let's look at the other stats. Chance stats 14, 37 spell points, and 10 stamina. 10 double digit stamina at first level is really nice. Um, only one attack per round, but you know, what you gonna do? And it's one to two damage. That's actually pretty good. Plus two, so that's four. Three to four damage. This matters because sometimes you fumble your weapon in this game. That's pretty much like rolling a one. Uh, you can get it back at the end of the fight, the weapon, but you are doing melee damage unless you have a spare weapon, which I almost always carry a spare weapon. This is really good. Luck's only a nine, but that's all right. Usually the priest doesn't need to be too lucky. And a decent enough strength score. Yep, 55, that puts me in young. So these modifiers got applied to whatever I rolled. So these just stack. So when you go, say you start at youth, when you switch from youth to young, your brawn goes up by one, your knowledge goes up by one, your judgment goes up by two, your agility goes up by one, okay. So then you go to prime, your brawn goes up another one, and so on and so forth. So vitality, which kind of cancels out from the previous year, a previous age group. So they just stack going forward, down all these other things too. Just going to, it would have been nice to be 53 and then get into young. That's okay. I'm 55. Freedom 55. Okay. Oh yes, this is the first one that we have that starts with spells. That's right. Oh, it's going to be rough for a bit. Um, Alright, so I'm going to use torches for now, but eventually I'm going to want shine because it gives me, it's basically like the light spell. I'm going to want some things for buffs. So magic aura and four full plate. Generally you want heal small wounds. I had enough spell points that I could have taken something from here right off the bat too. But... I'm going to take... The, okay, so Discover Magic. So you want to have at least one character that has Discover Magic. And ideally, we don't this time. You also want a character that has the Identify spell. Because it'll save you a lot of money. Getting things identified at the st stores. But Discover Magic, at least you get to check to make sure you're picking up the good stuff. And Discover Magic is one spell point per level. So you only really need one spell point at the end of your battle to check all the loot. Yes, I wish to keep this character. Alright. So let's begin a new adventure now. Find all our new ones, which are at the bottom here. Uh, who am I going to have at the front? Uh, yeah, we'll have Vermin the Fighter first. We have Harold as our Berserker. We'll have Clarissa, our assassin. I usually like doing that. Two fighters and then the assassin. I don't know why. And then we'll do... Who was who? Jeremiah was my battle mage. Amelia is my dabbler. And Tannis, my priestess last. Okay. We're doing decent. Jeremiah is a little weak on the HP. And he's my battle mage. So that could, that could bite us. That could potentially bite us. Now we have other things here, you can't see all of them, but there's normal monster, monster, monsters, and I don't remember what the last one is, but these are different difficulty levels of monsters, and it affects how your experience is gained. It gives you bonuses and whatnot. And same with the difficulty level. Um, both of these scale 
the strength of enemies and their tactics. So we're just going to do normal normal for now because at level 1 we don't need it any harder than it is. I don't like doing novice though because then it takes a long time to level up. As you can see, these are my other characters. They've done one full playthrough and the first chunk of scenario that gives you a fairly large horde of magic items. I've done that twice more because I just wanted to get all three of the options. Anyway, we'll get there. <laughs> I love that laugh. I love that laugh. Okay. So now the first thing we always do, we save. We figure out where we're going to save it. We don't want to put it here because that is... That is... This is where I have my current save game going on. I was doing a bunch in here. I've got a couple going. You can see because it says Lachis. I don't know what, know what Lachis means. Alright, so we're going to do game H. Game H for this. Welcome to the city of Bywater. A scenario for the use with the realms a scenario for use with the realms scenario driver if you enjoy playing realms and would like to see more scenarios developed please support us by spending sending us your registration fee i did once so i feel no guilt by uh, downloading this for free once you have registered this copy of realms you will be able to play the entire scenario this scenario is very loose it does not have a strong plot point it's true you can adventure where you want for as long as you want yep Whenever you've pretty much done everything, you can just pretty much keep grinding if you really want to. But why? Once you've registered this copy, you'll be able to playtest other scenarios before having to register them. Um, yeah. So before you register, it's basically like you're playtesting this, and there are certain areas, specifically the city of Waterford, that you can't go to. And there's like a whole bunch of stuff in Waterford. Other scenarios utilize the capabilities of the realm scenario driver to a greater extent. These scenarios feature a definite plotline, new monsters, new magical items, and more dangerous encounters. Further to this, there are some magic items that are unique to your scenario, and you cannot carry them over, and you cannot get more than one. When we encounter one that I'm aware of, I'll show you. Okay, so now we save again. So, at this junction, I'm going to immediately start showing you how to do stuff that's weird and hinky. So we're going to modify party because we need to change, what's her name, Amelia? We need to change her, I know I can change her icon somehow. <laughs> I might be stuck with that for her. Oh, yep, yeah, here, change portrait, change icon. Uh, Amelia, 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 Amelia. What are you, your dabbler? We'll do that. And change your icon. Okay. So you can also do Control F to fast save. The danger in this is it automatically saves to whatever one you selected last. So be aware of that. The other thing I do, I immediately do this. <laughs> when I am starting a new game, so I can go into this first building and get some allies. Now you have this allies tab. Normally what it holds is any some creatures you've summoned, but there's also some NPCs you can get. So we're going to go in here and we're going to get Ripper Red. He is a very useful melee guy. Now, this is dangerous. If you click this, you will start a fight. If you do this, you'll just take your money and do nothing. Um, so, I always do this one until I'm ready to do that scenario, that little battle. Which you aren't yet. Level up a few times. I believe it's the third door. Yeah, it's the third door. Now, if save again here. Oh, this is my default icon here. Change party icon. I think that's in modified party. Party icon. Party icon. Party icon. <laughs> Set preferences. Yes. So that's here. 
it affects all your games. And I like this one. Yeah, I like that one. We'll, we'll keep it that one. So I've saved. Do you want a, a burly drunken... A, oops, yeah, might as well. A burly dwarven warrior is snoring loudly on the bunk. Several empty flagons of ale are scattered about the room. Do you wake him? You can hit no, and then do it later. If you haven't saved, click yes. He awakes with a start, and he shakes the cobwebs from his head. As he shakes the cobwebs from his head, he begins to pat his belt suddenly. He stands and begins to shout, Hey, who stole my purse? I'll do a dwarven accent. Hey, who stole my purse? Without hesitation, he grabs a nearby axe and begins to swing. Me be thinking, me be knowing who has me purse. Me be thinking on getting it back just quick. Ow. He went first. Well, they're knocked out, but that's okay. They're not dead. So, with him, because he's going to become an NPC, he's just drunk and, disor drunk and disorientated, we want to hit finish. So we do nothing at the, for our turn, for the whole first turn, because suddenly Repa Red stops attacking. Oi! Me be sorry, folks. I guess I lost me head. Twas the girl who me thinks took me coin. Perhaps you will let me travel with you for a while. Tis a dangerous place to be traveling alone. Think I tag along with ye. So this, as you can see, may be important, leave them at your own risk. Special character. I don't know what he's special for. I have not found it, other than him being helpful. Get experience points. They were listed on there, but now they're not. I don't know why. Now let's get out of here. Nope. Nope. Hard nope. Alright. Now we have an opportunity... To do some things actually. So we're gonna save again. Now, if we get jumped by a pack of thieves, we cannot take them right now because we have made them super hard. I will show you how hard they are before I revert. But now what we want to do is we want to heal our dead people. Save. Lock that in. Oh this is great. You come upon a shocking scene. You spy a small group of town bullies attacking an old woman. It would seem they are after the da a dagger she is clutching in her to her chest. Do you wish to intervene on her behalf? If you can do, you want to back away, you can go ahead. Nothing will happen. Rescue the woman, and something good will happen. The bullies do not have the stomach to fight and flee as you at your approach. The old hag scowls at you. Stay away! You can't have it. The dagger she is clutching is rather ornate and seems very likely to be magical in nature. What do you do? So you can take the dagger, and you get the dagger for free. She won't fight you for it because she's an old lady, but it's better to always bid her good day. Because this shop over here, that is currently closed, that I have not gone and walked over yet, is her shop. As you walk away, she yells, Come and see me at my, Come and see me at my shop. I will give you a special price. She quickly disappears around a corner before you realize that you do not even know where her shop is. I do, as I've played before. Now, we're out there yet, and I'll mention it again. Buy things from her, yes, but don't ever sell things to her, because her discount applies to her sell, sell prices too. Sell things here. This is the general store. And this is a bar. We'll get there in a minute. Madame Oswell's specialty shop appears to be open. As you glance in through the window, you recognize Madame Oswell as the old hag you saved from the ruffians. Here it is. This is the dagger you could have got. It's 4,940 gold to buy. It's pretty pricey. It reduces, gives you fire protection and a special ice damage. Four gold. Actually, I think it does four plus up to four plus four gold damage. Unless, no, you're you're 
your bonus damage here can apply to that special damage too, is all it is. So there's a bunch of good stuff in here. This is the first magic shop, if you're whether or not you're familiar with it. Joystick. It's plus three weapons. Plus three is the highest I'm aware of you can get in this game. Plus one, two, three. She's got a magic bow. That's useful. Darts. Nice club. Some other interesting things. It's all quite pricey. This is the best armor I'm aware of in the game. I don't know if there's plus six, but if there is, I will find it eventually. Those are special for casters. Uh, close and trickery. Ooh, this is where I find out because this is... Okay, she's got... These are thieves' tools. Let's see if the assassin can use them. Yes! Yes, she can. I'm just going to buy those right away. So if you hold control, you can equip stuff right away. But otherwise, you can go into items. No, nope, that's not items. You can go into items, and you can click use to equip stuff and unequip stuff. But if it has a charge on it and you click use, it'll use a charge. And it won't equip it. This, it breaks. It breaks when you try and do it with a weapon that's got charges. So I've just lit a torch. So yeah, she's got some really good stuff. I usually end up pulling this from her. And this at some point. Uh, this is really good. Um, surprisingly, even though it does piercing damage too, a priest, a priest can use it. Um, these war axes are very nice for most things. What can you use, actually? So... What can you use? Oh, you can use decent weapons. You can use some very decent weapons. Oh, this is good. Normally I have more decent weapons than I know what to do with. I sell a bunch of them. This is going to be good. I may do a rapid second and third playthrough with this just to get more of the magical weapons. This is a cool one. It's only usable by a rogue. But, and I don't have one, but I almost never buy it anymore, so even though it's, because it's really pricey, first of all, and I almost never actually need it, but it looks cool, purple robe, robe. alright, so here's the general store, so banking is important, I did not have banking at Madame Moswell's, but what this means is, okay, so money changing is available everywhere, but if you don't have banking, when you pool and share enough times, you'll start losing money. I don't know why, I presume it's just coins falling on the floor. And, here because you have banking, if you pool the money and you're done, you say no, and you come back, it's still there. Any other place without banking, that money will be gone. The general store and the temple, which is way that way, they have banking. Okay. So now what we're doing... This is a random adventure encounter, that's good. A man approaches you and speaks in a hushed voice. I have informed me of your, the arrival of it. Adventuring spanned. Hear my offer before you begin. And he tells a story of an evil man who has a stable of wild beast men. The man asks if you would eliminate the stable of beast men for monetary compensation. He offers you 400 gold pieces if you kill the foul creatures. Do you agree? Heck yes. I don't even know if there's a consequence for this one. I always do it. The man gives you a map showing the location of the hidden cave just outside the town walls. Good luck, friends. I shall seek ye out and reward thee when the deed is done. Now, good day to you. Yep. There's just a bunch of little scenarios you can pick up right off the bat. Um, I'm waiting for a specific one, and I'll show you what it is. When, I'll tell you what it is when we get it. But there's another one. This is the guy's an actual blacksmith, and you can pick up another side quest. There's a couple here. Great location of Beast Corral. We're just up this way a little bit, because this is a graveyard. We were just beside it. This is just below it. This is, 
It's not bad. I wouldn't do it at level one, but it's not. I do it. I do it between level two and three, maybe, maybe at level three. You've entered the blacksmith's shop. The, sh the smith is hard at work on repairing the bellows. His face is covered with soot, except for a clean streak leading down each cheek. It would appear he has been crying. Hello, good pe. Hello, good people. What can I do for you today? You ask him where his apprentice is. That must. That he must stoop to fixing his own bellows. My son was slain several days ago in the Aaron Mountains. We found his body defiled by the evil sluck that live there. I cannot get the king's men to rout out the foul vermin, and I do not have the gold to purchase retribution from mercenaries. All I have is the sweat of my brow, and that buys little justice these days. You would seem to be of hardy stock. If you were to send these foul sluck to the pits that spawned them, I would be eternally grateful. Do you do? Oh, I always avenge his son. It's, it's experience points, man. And he gives you something at the end anyway, too. If I had a monk, I could use the thing, but I don't have a monk. The blacksmith hands you a map showing the location where they found the son's body. As you depart, he says, Thank you, good people. Return when you have cleansed the land of these foul vermin, and we shall celebrate. Blacksmith's body. It's down here. Bywater's up here. Um... This is a pit full of slimes that you can fight over and over again. Good for XP farming at low levels. But if you're too low a level, they'll kill you. This is where they found his body. Spoiler, over here is where you fight them. This middle building, I believe. Might be this one, but I think it's this middle building. And yep, they're like lizard men or kobolds or something. They're not very strong. Is there any pickup scenarios I'm aware of? Oh, do I have a rope? I need to make sure I have a rope or someone with a good acrobatic skill. Why aren't you wearing your coat? Oh, can you can you wear any armor? Oh, I hope you can wear padded armor. This is gonna be rough for you. Right about berserkers. Do I have any rope? I have no rope. Oh, I'm just gonna pick up a rope just in case. Yeah, pick up a rope. Just to, always handy to have. You'll see why if we find if Lassie needs to be rescued. Oh yeah. Initially, in the first patch of this, it was always summer, and then at some point they introduced at day three at midnight. It becomes winter. I like it, but it never seems to go away. <laughs> I don't oh search. If you turn on search, everything takes longer when you walk. Like I take twenty five minutes, but if I have it off, I only take five minutes. But it's nice because you know, this is Lassie in the well. What is it, Timmy? Is Lassie down the well? Go with him and help. You can shoot him away, but then he never comes back. Come this way, hurry, hurry, hurry. At the bottom, you see a miserable little mutt covered in mud. Bucket for drawing water is so old, it's completely useless. Okay. I don't think I've saved very recently. That's okay. I should be able to do acrobatic act and still have a second chance if I fail. My assassin can do 55. That's a good chance. That's a good chance. Successful. Good. The rope was a backup because the rope is guaranteed to work. Um, there's also a couple spells you can do. Uh, I believe Fantastic Wings. Uh, Superfly. Those two spells can help you with this, but I don't have those spells. There's four ways of succeeding in this scenario. You have been successful and have retrieved the mutt. Looks at, Boyd looks at you with missy eyes as he thanks you. Somewhere, a passionate deity looks down and smiles. You are invited to come play at the old cave. What cave, you ask? Passionate Dave looks down and smiles. Oh, look, you did something good. Oh, by the way, that mouse clicker, that, what it looks like right now, that's what a mouse used to look like on a 
older Mac. Very old. What well, the old cave that leads into the castle courtyard? He draws you a map on a piece of parchment. You kindly turn down the chance to play with him, and he skips off with his happy but muddy friend. Experience points! Map gained. We were here! And that's where it is. And you can find these secret areas without maps. Particularly if you have search on them. But sometimes you can't. So we're going to keep resting here. Save every so often. So that if okay, we get it. Oh, that's what I was waiting for. You greet a passing wizard who smiles warmly at you. You strike up a wonderful conversation and become friends. He asks about your travels and would like to know if he may accompany you on your exploits. Yes, free wizard, yes. You return to a small shack to gather his things before you set off with your new found friend. His name is Vodalian. Vodalian. And he states that he simply loves adventure. Now I have Vodalian. He's pretty tough. Got good magic resistance and a good armor rating. He's better than any of ours. He has one magical attack. His magic using and smart. Let's see if he's considered smart. He's considered smart. Very tough. 23. Oof. That's tough. Armor rating 40. So now what we do with this junction is we go back to modified party and go back to normal monsters again. <laughs> because what will happen. These guys, oh, it says eight, but it's probably because his intelligence goes down. His hit points will stay where they were at a hundred and whatever, which is amazing because we need that. So, now, now that we've done those things, we're going to do this one last thing and then we're going to wrap this up. First thing you should always do, you could even do it before those other things, but I chose to do those first is go to this building right here. It is a tavern. You entered a rather fine tavern filled with only the best citizens of Bywater. Cough, cough. Most of the tables are filled with patrons eating spiced potatoes and engaging, engaged in interesting discussions. You find yourself a table near the back. You're standing in a tavern. You can do this and this forever. I don't know if this uses actual gold. It doesn't actually seem to, but that's okay. Neither does this seem to actually use gold. This goes away after you do this, so we're going to do this for giggles. Ask the barmaid to tell you any local news. Oh, I don't really know much. She smiles and points up to the seedy-looking man. Ask him. He's been telling me all kinds of stories all day. So then we approach the table of a seedy-looking character who is watching us. What do you want? Me no make trouble. Good king say me no have to leave. His panic quickly subsides as he begins to, as it begins to dawn in his puny, puny mind that you are not the king's men and you are not there to kick him out of town. Targ no go out of town. Targ being chased. You help Targ? He grasps at your sleeve as he stands. Me go with you. Tell big secret. We go to see big iron box near lake and Rawr! you see a steel point sprout from his chest a big iron box near lake mm. I don't remember what that big iron box is hopefully I can find it he pitches forward with a red feathered shaft growing from his back as bile spews from his slack jaw he thrusts a slip of paper into your grasp you see his assassins at the bar, three very large orcs smiling a toothy grin and brandishing weapons. They make for the door in haste, yelling, Targ the thief has gotten his due. Any man who follows any man who follows us shall join him in Hades. Apparently, they did not see the slip of paper Targ gave you. Which I'm pretty sure is not the big iron box which is just it's just weird dialogue i'm not sure if that was intentional I'm wondering if they 
moved something and didn't upgrade that text. So you can choose the orcs in spite of their warning. I don't think you can catch them. I don't remember. I just know this is useless. Play dumb and examine the map back at your table to avoid getting involved. You can do this, but you'll lose out on something. Search Targ's body quickly. Don't do this. You find nothing, and there's a fairly decent chance that whoever you select to do that is going to get take damage and become poisoned. And at this stage, you cannot deal with poison. You cannot. You would have to spend some money over at the the temple to get the poison cured. Wait around for the town guard to show up and explain why. This is the best option always. The town guard is quick to arrive. You explain your view of what happened. The guards prepare to leave with the body and begin a search for his assassins. The man in charge of the guards is known by the name Hikar. He sounds like Riker, but with an H. Hikar. He invites you to visit him at the guards' barracks. He hands you a paper. This will allow you to enter Castle Anthrax so you may visit. I believe we have much in common. Good day. You want these. They're not identified right now, but you don't need them to be. Who's got my lowest weight limit? My assassin? Alright, you get the pieces of paper. 100 points. No one's leveled up yet. So now we save. We're over the hour. So that's it for now. I'll show you next time how we get into the castle using the invitation and what other options you have depending on if you want to play i generally play neutral good chaotic good sort of deal um or even neutral because i just kind of do whatever gets me the most magic items but you can also play with your own personal morality it's late i yawned and that'll get you various outcomes in City Bywater doesn't affect the scenario overall, just kind of you miss out on some magic items if you do things certain ways. Well, thank you everybody for watching today. And I hope you all have a very good day. And uh, it's the end of 2020 right now, so have a good happy new year. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.